We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and we're in fall break and nothing's happening. Nada, 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 nope. nada. Maybe eventually we'll have enough to do a fall break recap episode. But for now, we have some F101s for you, which is really As exciting. we've been threatening since the <laughs> like last, January. the actual, <laughs> well, A, January, but B, like, we were, at, we were, we're pretending that we were going to have the brain capacity to do this during the summer break when I was coming home from camp and Emily was coming home from Argentina. And spoiler alert, we did not have the brain capacity to do any, uh, any recording during the summer break. So here we are in fall break with some F1, uh, F101. Honestly, it's probably so questionable if we have the brain capacity to be doing this, but here oh, we are. No, we definitely <laughs> do not for a number of reasons, but we're going to muddle through anyway. See, yeah, we are here. So we are here. Welcome back to our uh, F1 educational series where we talk about things about Formula One that you may or may not know. And this is something that we kind of thought about on doing on a whim and then decided like, oh, that would be really, really cool, which is we are going to talk about F1 team genealogy and kind of trace back the origins of Formula One teams from where we are right now to where Formula One teams got their start, which for some teams is going to be a little bit more complicated than say the teams that we're going to talk about today, which are going to be Ferrari and McLaren because Ferrari and McLaren are pretty straightforward history wise. So we're getting them out of the way before we get to the fun, complicated stuff. Yeah, exactly. So we're starting with the oldies, but the goodies today. So Ferrari and McLaren, two of the most uh, storied. Yeah, we can call it storied. Storied uh, teams on the grid and also the ones with the least complicated history, just because it's been Ferrari, period. (laughs) McLaren, period. (laughs) But I mean, yeah, they had like get one to some of the more complex ones, but yeah, <laughs> have but to I mean, start somewhere. they did have like a couple of things that have happened that are historically of note in the grand scheme of Formula One, like maybe like one or two things. Yeah, but really cool still to talk about them and their founding and how things happened. So let's start with Ferrari. Sure. I think it only makes sense, right? I mean, you are the Ferrari <laughs> fan, but more importantly, they're the oldest and like oldest surviving and most successful Formula One team in, you know, in the current generation. Yeah, they are. They're, they've been around since race one. Yes. I mean, they've been around since before race one, if we want to be technical about it, because, you know, we Formula That's One. That's why we're here. So let's get technical. Right. <laughs> because Formula One, as a as the entity that we know it today, started in 1950. But there are a number of teams that drove in 1950 that obviously existed before beforehand, where basically, you know, a bunch of people came together and were like, hey, we should make this like an official racing championship and give it a name and everything and that's what became formula one but ferrari was one of those teams that started you know in the 1920s which is you know it was 21 years before the first formula one season ferrari was founded god they're so great so yeah Yeah. so enzo ferrari if you did not see the horrible movie ferrari (laughs) um he did not actually see it (laughs) he you didn't miss much i didn't Um, think so also, this is such a side note, but they need to stop casting Adam Driver as Italian In anything. old men. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, I keep getting Gu- a House of Gucci and Ferrari mixed up because I'm like, oh yeah, Adam Driver. But I'm like, but which Italian Adam Driver are we talking about? <laughs> I... So for a lot of reasons, I really don't like Adam Driver as an actor. And that is one of the things that, like... I'll watch the Ferrari movie eventually, but it's one of the things that, you know, I would did not make me excited about <laughs> that Ferrari movie. Oh my God, that's too funny. Um, but yeah, so it was founded by Enzo Ferrari, like Catherine said, in 1929, which was like 21 years before the very first F1 race, which is absolutely insane. But they didn't start racing in Ferraris, right? They started racing in an Alfa Romeo car. Yes. Which Which I also we'll get to them later. Yeah. <laughs> there are a few episodes 
away. Um, then in like the 40s, that's when they started to introduce their own car made by Ferrari. Yeah. So. And then obviously the, you know, the first Formula One race, they were in the first Formula One race uh, all the way back in 1950. They are the only team to compete in every season of the Drivers' Championship. And we all know, like, Ferrari is basically like a religion in Italy. Like, it's one yeah. of the main religions. That's it's how amazing. valuable and established and important it is to that country. And I would say to, like, the entire F1 community. Right. It's one of the reasons why Lewis Hamilton is leaving Mercedes is because, like, who doesn't want to be a Ferrari driver? Like, you know, whether or not you, that's where your career goes to die, like, there's still a lot of, you know, that's what the current generation era of Ferrari kind of is. But if you think about, like, the Ferrari heyday, like, who doesn't want to be the next Michael Schumacher? Right. And I think it's just... I mean, we ta- we've talked about this before, how it's just such a incredible team. And you have these, you know, periods of time where you have, like, the Michael Schumachers, the Nicky Laudas, where everything is Ferrari. It's, and everyone wants to wear the red, and everyone wants to be a part of that. And, like, it's such a historical pillar in F1. Like, why wouldn't you want to be a part of it? Yeah, exactly. And why wouldn't you want to have the opportunity to become that next driver's champion? They've had 15 championship wins. Five of those titles are Schumacher's, but like big names. You have Ascari, you know, Juan Manuel Fangio, Mickey Lauda, Jody Schechter. Um, and then of course, most recently, Kimi Raikkonen. I am obsessed with this man and I wish I was in F1 like 20 years ago so I could see like his full career and all of the oh, mayhem yeah. that was caused by him. Um, and we'll talk more about the mayhem that Kimi Raikkonen caused <laughs> once we get to Lotus, um, which will be <laughs> at some point in the not-too-distant future because Kimi Raikkonen and Lotus are just a whole heaping helping of a thing. It's a whole thing. But no, I think like my like biggest moment of Ferrari with Kimi is them like talking to him. And they, I mean, like presenters from Sky Sports, saying like, oh, yes, well, you do speak Italian, right? And he's like, no. And they're like, but Ferrari requires all of its drivers to learn Italian. He's like, no. <laughs> like, but they do. He's like, yeah, I know. But like, I'm, I don't. I, I don't. <laughs> I don't speak Italian. I will not learn. That's not for me. I don't want no. to. And then, I no, think he's like, oh, drive well, why cars. not? And he's like, oh, because I don't want to. So I won't <laughs> be learning Italian. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we all know that like, Almost everyone, like, there's so many amazing Kimi Raikkonen moments. My favorite, and this was not when he was driving for Ferrari, was, of course, when he crashed in Monaco and watched the rest of his race from his yacht. But, like, that's just quintessential Kimi Raikkonen. He's like, I don't want to learn Italian, so I'm not gonna. Um, What a G. What a G. But honestly, like, the biggest G, I think, of all time, forever and always, I don't care how many championships Lewis or Max get, like, Michael Schumacher is the pinnacle of F1, and his, like, height was when he was in a Ferrari car. Yeah, he he really, like, the, the Ferrari success that we know today really is, like, that was, like, they're obviously, you know, Nicky Lauda, very successful at Ferrari, but, like, Michael Schumacher just went on a tear when he drove for Ferrari, you know, from 96 to 2006, 72 Grand Prix wins. That's a lot of Grand Prix wins with one constructor, let alone in, in a driver's career, and we all know that, like, Lewis Hamilton and Michael Schumacher's, you know, career numbers are some of the most absurd in the grand scheme of the sport. Um, and Schumacher and Hamilton and Verstappen hold pretty much all of Formula One's records are either held or tied by those three people started by Schumacher. Right. And I think he really brought like the relevance of Ferrari back to Ferrari because they had gone a long time without having, you know, a championship driver until he got in the car at Ferrari and he really brought back like the glory of Ferrari. Yeah. Cause like, if you look at the, like the constructors championships, there was a, 
there was a pretty big gap between 1983 and 1999 um, of no constructor championships and then you had 99 2000 2001 2002 2003 2004 all just straight off back to back to back which obviously we won't see again until we talk about mercedes um and they're right. you know eight eight constructors straight tear but that's that's really hard to do so even harder in modern formula one but like it was also really hard to do back then yeah so and i think i mean everyone knows michael schumacher is so so good but I think sometimes like we talk so much about Lewis and Max in the modern age and like this it wasn't that long ago when Schumacher was doing all this for Ferrari yeah I mean I was I was a teenager when it (laughs) happened Um, and that was either a very long time ago or not a very long time ago if you want to do that math but it's it's just the the way that Ferrari really you know they were the they were it in Formula One for so long. And that that's why all these drivers, and it, it also goes to, to show you like the driver's ages, like, you know, the driver's ages get younger and younger and younger every year. And it's the average um, age of the drivers, other than, you know, a few outliers who are going to be in their forties is going to skew even younger next season when you have the likes of Kimi Antonelli and Ollie Behrman joining the grid. But like, all of these drivers were like young kids when we were living in the golden age of Ferrari. So that explains why everyone's like, yeah, I like, I, I love the team I drive for, but also like, come on, it's Ferrari. Right. Exactly. And I think it's interesting. Like if we think about it and I I saw a really funny video of, um, Franco Colapinto trying to like go and talk to Lewis. Yeah. (laughs) They were all together, which like is so funny because he, I'd say like, well, he's the youngest driver on the grid now, but he grew up watching Lewis Hamilton. And like now yeah. he's driving against Lewis, which is crazy. But that's probably like how Lewis was with Schumacher. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, because like, there was overlap with them too. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just, it's interesting to see like that evolution. And like in a few years, we'll see people who are watching Max Verstappen if Max is still around. But um, it's, probably not. <laughs> probably not. But it's just, it's cool to see like that overlap and who people idolized growing up and the crossover. So I don't know. I just, he's always been like the coolest for me for, for drivers. So he's just did so much. It's even if you don't know a lot about formula one and you're like brand new to formula one, it's like, you have to have heard the name Schumacher, whether yeah. it's related to Mick Schumacher or Ralph Schumacher, who still <laughs> needs to stop talking. Like, Can it's an arch nemesis. Oh, we have a couple of my arch nemeses when it comes to F1 media that are be featured throughout this, but obviously Ralph is, is you know, right up there at number one. Whether, whether or not you know, you're eventually going to trace yourself back to Michael Schumacher, and then you're like, oh, he was a big deal. Yeah, no, exactly. So... On the, on the flip side, right? So we have all these drivers, his, a historical program, but I found the biggest or like the most interesting fact is not with the drivers, but with the team principals. So mm-hmm. again, Ferrari, historic team, lots of glory, everything like that. They go through team principals like candy, like they, so they've had 23. So on average, it's about three years per team principal, which is insane. Cause if you think about some teams, that's not the case, right? They're going to go through them much slower. Some of them are there forever, but Ferrari just really turns and burns them, which to me also is not super surprising because they expect to win. They expect to be the best because they are Ferrari. And if you can't get it done, then you're done. Yeah, exactly. And like one of the the ones that comes to mind more recently is Mattia Bonato. Exactly. Who, yeah. You know, was a really good team principal, but was not a good enough team principal for the standards that Ferrari puts on itself. Like, you know, like you said, there's only three like the average tenure of a Ferrari team principal is three years, which is the amount of time that Mattia Bonato was in the seat. But, you know, if you look at the longevity like the longest serving team principal at ferrari was john todd and that was only 14 years from 93 to 07 and like that's 
one of the major outliers when you have eight of the 23 team principals only lasted a season. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. I think. I mean, it's crazy to think, but it also isn't because it's Ferrari. Right. And like their standard is so high. And if you don't perform, then you're done. So Yeah. Like Fred Vasseur, current team principal, he knew what he was getting into when he signed on yeah. in, you know, for, for 2023. But then you also have like a lot of Formula One team principals, like they don't necessarily leave, you know, Formula One once once they're done. Obviously, Bonato is now at Sauber Motorsport, which will eventually be Audi. And Stefano Domenicali, who was team principal from 2008 to 2013, is currently the CEO of the Formula One group. So they kind of all just like hang around a while. But it just, I, when I was looking up how many team principals there were at Ferrari and just the number and like the, the lack of longevity in these 10 years, I just like, that just made me laugh. Cause this is like, this team will be 75 years old next year. And they, that, that's a lot of team principals. Yeah. I know 75 years. That's so cool. Like such a that's also ridiculous milestone to hit. And I can't wait for Monza when they're celebrating oh, their 75th. That's going to be really, really, really cool. I yeah. know. Again, just looking forward to 2025. We Everything is 2025. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, let's do some quick hits on um, Ferrari before we move on to our next team. So, First win the team ever had was the 1951 British Grand Prix. And Kathleen, you found a really fun fact that like, so this was their first win, but it was the 12th race in our, like what we call now F1. Cause they were racing before, but in 1950, they formalized it. So 1951 Ferrari's first win was the 12th race ever. And it was also Ferrari's 12th race ever. So their first win came very, very early on in this whole big grand platform. Scheme of things. Scheme yeah, of things, and that's, yeah. That's one of the things that as as we keep, you know, going through the other teams and doing research is like, how long did it take for these teams to get that first win? And obviously, I have not done all of the research on all of the teams yet because there's a lot of teams and a lot of teams will also change hands a lot more than Ferrari. So it's going to take me a minute, but it, it, I, it, it'll be really interesting to see for me as I go through and do all, doing this research of like how long some teams took and like, is, you know, what, what is the fastest and what, you know, what took longer. So I think that that's really cool. Um, and also, also interesting. They didn't win their first season in formula one. Well, that's okay. We'll give them a pass. <laughs> Um, So my other favorite, like, stat from Ferrari is their worst grid position for, like, finishing, which is 31st, (laughs) which sounds wild because we don't have 31 drivers anymore. Um, So if you look at it, you're like, there's no way that can be right. But it was. It was 31st at the 1952 Indianapolis Grand Prix. So again, back when Indianapolis had a Grand Prix, which I think that's another fun thing to see like with Ferrari is how many wins they've had across all these seasons at races that no longer exist. Right. And races that some teams have never and will never race. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't see, you know, um, among the, the many available tracks in the United States, I don't see Formula One going back to Indianapolis anytime soon, if not ever. And so the, the, and the last time we were there was 2006, which was a year after one of the most absurd Formula One races of all time, which of course was the 2005 US Grand Prix, which we have a whole episode that we reacted to um, about that, which if you're watching on YouTube will be linked above. But it's, it, yeah, it, it is really cool to see some races that like just don't exist anymore. And with the way that the Formula One calendar is probably won't ever come back, which I hope is not true for some like Malaysia, because I really want us to go back to Malaysia. And I don't know if I've ever said that before on this podcast. Nope, just about a oh, hundred well. times. <laughs> yes. Well, okay. So that's Ferrari. First team. I call it the first team. I know it's not, but one of the very first teams, one of the, well, it is the longest running team and it is the most successful. So obviously this was a natural choice for us to start our genealogy project uh, with Ferrari. Yeah. And then going to the second oldest and second most successful, that would be our current Cinderella's at the dance party, McLaren. Good old McLaren. 
Yeah. Yep. So they did not join Formula One as soon as Ferrari did, but like Catherine said, they're the second oldest team. So they were founded in 1963. So 13 years after Ferrari started in organized F1, we'll call it. Uh, yeah. Good old McLaren came around with their first entry coming in 1966 at Monaco. Actually. Yeah. So to clarify, second one. oldest surviving team. Yeah. You know, yeah. That was implied. <laughs> yes. Um, second oldest surviving team currently on the grid. Right. Um, mm. Right. Yeah. You know, all, all, you know, right behind Ferrari also kind of almost as successful as Ferrari. Of course, Mercedes is a lot more successful in modern days, but we will get to Mercedes eventually. Uh, but yeah, I mean, eight constructors championships. They haven't had one since 1998, uh, which they might have one this year. We Crossing don't know all yet. Of our fingers, they have one this year. We, we shall see. And then, you know, 12 drivers championships. And of course, their most recent drivers champion in 2008, Lewis Hamilton, who is currently at Mercedes. And then next year will be at Ferrari. Look at him just picking up all of the like big historical teams. Yeah. What and I mean, he was a guy. big thing for McLaren when, you know, when he started, he started his career there and then, you know, almost immediately moved on to Mercedes. But he was there and he at least got them a driver's championship. So that is true. Yeah. So then like okay, thinking so- about most successful drivers and like, the, the, I think there's a difference between like notable drivers and successful drivers. Cause if you look at like Alan Prost and Ayrton Senna who combined for, you know, 65 Grand Prix wins over their careers. But then you also have like Emerson Fittipaldi, James Hunt, Nicky Lauda, uh, Mika Hakkinen, um, and then Lewis Hamilton. And then, you know, that, and that even doesn't consider like the modern Formula One drivers like Lando Norris is, you know, when we start, you know, when we go back, you know, 10 years from now and do another one of these, it'll be Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri. Um, And also, you know, Carlos Sainz is notable because he did drive with them, but it's, they have a lot of really notable drivers. Like it was, they do. McLaren. It seems like they're not there for like the historic part of their career, but they are there. Yeah. It, it's, it's definitely one of those like big deal teams to join in early, like, especially if you're newer to formula one, like we are and McLaren other, you know, up until this season, hasn't been that great in what we'll call like the drive to survive era of, of formula one, you know, it, you you really don't know what you don't know. And one of those things is just how many really good drivers drove for McLaren. Yeah. And they they have a really long list. I mean, they have a ton of history. Because, I mean, we've been talking, they are the second oldest team. They have a ton of history. So naturally, they're going to have a ton of really good drivers driving for them. It's just they yeah. haven't, like what I was saying is, Lewis Hamilton is and will be known as one of the greatest drivers in F1. Not if you're Catherine, but it's a fact. No, no, no. (laughs) Even if you're Catherine, stop making me say nice things about Lewis Hamilton, Emily. That's why I'm taking this one. I know, but but I understand what he is to Formula One. I just don't like him. (laughs) Personal vendettas aside. I mean, we know that if you know me, then you know I have personal vendettas left, right, and center. Right. So going back to Lewis Hamilton, (laughs) right? like he was there, he wasn't there for long. He did win a driver's championship, but when we think of Lewis, we don't think McLaren, we think Mercedes. When we think of Nicky Lauda, we don't think McLaren, we think Ferrari. So it's just kind of like one of those teams that's been around forever and they have a ton of success, but no one necessarily like thinks about them as that level. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, even when you think about like, say, you know, Fittipaldi, Fittipaldi is, you know, a major name in the history of Formula One, just because of like their family's longevity. There are so many Fittipaldis thrown about, you know, Pietro Fittipaldi was a reserve driver for Haas for many years, and he's um, finally moved on to, to IndyCar this season. But like, there's so many names that don't get dropped nearly as often as you know the current big you know flashy wild names and of course the names of like the you know former drivers who always show up and end up on like martin brundle's grid walk uh like jackie stewart yeah oh. Love jackie jackie. Stewart. yeah and then of course you can't um you can't 
talk about you know McLaren without talking about Bruce McLaren who founded the team tragically lost his life but like the team was you know it was it was it was kind of crafted for him to continue driving in motorsport and he was actually the only McLaren driver for a good couple seasons before they added a second driver which is something that you could do back then like the the rules for you know formula 1 and motorsport were very different back in the 50s 60s and 70s and so you had like constructors who entered but only one driver sometimes drivers only drove in a couple of races like you don't you didn't have the same structure as you have now but then you have someone like Bruce McLaren who was you know McLaren's first you know race winner um and also the year that he won the first race which was 68 was also the first season where there were only where there were actually two drivers driving for McLaren well, wasn't he also the team principal at the time? He, he was driving and team principal. Yeah, he. he was I would the love driver. to see Zach Brown behind the wheel <laughs> and yelling at everybody as. Well, I guess he's not team principal; he's CEO. CEO. I always Andrea just like Stella. Right. Okay. So put Andrea Stella behind the wheel, also while he's trying to run strategy and like oversee everything. Like, it's I don't understand how it's actually possible. I mean, because it's not, it was just so, <laughs> like, I'm sure back then all you needed to be team principal is, like, get out of the car, change your hat, and be like, so how did your driver do today? But, we, like, when it comes to, like, the team principal role, that role is, like, who's in charge of the team? And for McLaren, which is named for the guy who's in the car, you know, that you are the principal, you are the driver, you're also probably lead mechanic and engineer. <laughs> How many hats can you wear at McLaren? <laughs> so many. But also, I'd like to talk about team principals. They also had a, they've had a decent number. Not, they haven't had 23 team principals in their tenure. They've had eight uh, team principals, except technically it was seven because Ron Dennis did two stints as team principal. Um, so he he actually had a very long standing um, service as as uh, as team principal at McLaren. Ferrari could never. He was there for 27 years in his first stint, and then did a, a three year stint from 14 to 16 to kind of come back. Classic. No, that's insane that they let one guy run it for 27 years. Like, I bet Ferrari had seven or eight team principals just in that time period. Probably. And eight, like, I get that eight is maybe more than some, but at the same time, like, eight is so much lower than Ferrari. So much. But also, like, that was that was really like the year of kind of the, the heyday. It was 81 to 2008. So you've had constructors championships from 84 to 98 and then drivers championships from 84 to Lewis in 2008. So like yeah. a bulk of their success did come in the years that Dennis was team principal yeah. the first time. The first time around. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I want to do some quick hits on McLaren as well. So their first win was the, like you said, the 1968 Belgian Grand Prix and Bruce McLaren did win that while he was also team principal. Yep. God bless him. So that would have put F1 Grand Prix at 165 and it was McLaren's 23rd race. So a theme I'm kind of seeing here is that these teams, and maybe it was the time, but new to the grid had early success. And by success, I mean a Grand Prix win. It took Ferrari 12 races. It took McLaren 23. Like that to me doesn't seem like a ton, especially if we look at it in modern day, like there's some teams who haven't won in 20 years. There's some teams who haven't won at all. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so it seems like maybe, but at the same time, they had more cars back then that they were racing against. I mean, again, 31 in the Indianapolis Grand Prix, but so more entrance, but they do have early success. Yeah, they had early success, but there's also a different, you know, like qualifying, you know, you could enter into a race, but if you don't actually qualify for the race, then right. you don't start the race. So that was something that was also very different. And, you know, the cars were also like tiny compared to the cars we have now. Um, and that, all of those things go into just how completely different Formula One was back then to compare it where it is now. Like we've talked about it in terms of like safety and car size and just like the, the 
in, in everything in general, you know, it's so different. And I, I don't necessarily know if easy is the right word, but it kind of feels like it was easier to get an early successful win back in the yield than it is now. Yeah. Yeah. That would make sense. So, and so this is like something that I'm just thinking of off the cuff. So let's mind meld here. But I also feel like McLaren, like I was kind of talking about earlier, is one of the teams where, like, it has a ton of drivers, but they're not known for their time at McLaren. I feel like almost everyone on the current grid has driven for McLaren. <laughs> like, if you think about it, it's obviously Lando Oscar, Lewis was there, Checo was there, Carlos was there, uh, Fernando Alonso drove for them. <laughs> I feel like there's more. Um Mad K Max was at McLaren, wasn't he? Yes. No. Yes, he was. I think so. Um, was Hulkenberg? But you know what I, I mean? Like, I feel like half the grid has driven for McLaren, but like that's not how they how we remember them by. No, you're you're totally right. But I I, I don't think so. Hold on. Uh no, Hulkenberg did not wait. No, he drove he drove for Williams, not for McLaren. Okay. And okay, we'll, so we'll there's like to... eight, we'll say. Yeah, there's, but like that's still like out a of lot. Of drivers. That's so many. Yeah, especially when seats change and stuff like that, and like people leave the grid and new people join. That's still a lot for one team yeah. to have driven. Like, yeah, they just they've had so many drive. Like it's, I feel like there was a time. And and it kind of like it it comes in and out of like the the history of of McLaren where McLaren is one of those like stepping stone teams which yeah. now that's like Williams Alpine Haas where like you go there start your career and then you go somewhere else and like McLaren you know outside of that big streak of success in the those those years like the 80s 90s you know was a team where you have people coming in and coming out and then like you said going and doing their best and having their best years with other teams yeah no and like I didn't put all that together until we started doing this and like actually talking about it yeah, no, fully. It's it's very much like, oh, like even when, when I was looking at, you know, I did like worst, you know, worst seasons, worst grid position finish, just, you know, in case we run out of things to talk about. Um, when, and, and for like worst grid position finish, which like, P, you know, being classified P20 is, you know, someone's got to do it these days. But, you know, some years like 20th wasn't even the worst. But then seeing like the list of people who finished P20th for McLaren that were like classified P P20, Ayrton Senna. Okay, that that makes sense. You know, it was the 90s. Sergio Perez, I saw that it was like, wait, Perez drove for McLaren when? The answer is 2013. And then also Lando Norris this season finished P20 for McLaren um, in Austria. Uh, good old Lando. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I think it's just really interesting when we truly take a step back in time and think through who the drivers were at what time, who they were going up against, like what the grid looked like. Um, yeah. And as far back as you look with the current teams, like you'll always see McLaren and Ferrari, but I don't even, but that's the other thing too. Like I didn't, necessarily recognize and realize how old McLaren is like I could have yeah. swore they took over in like the 70s or something but they've been a team since you know the 60s which is crazy yeah and another thing that we're gonna see is how many of these current teams that took over for other teams like the like and we're going to talk about Haas next week, but, you know, Haas as a team that was founded and joined the grid and kind of sprouted out of nowhere, similar to the ways that Ferrari and McLaren were established. That's not the most common way to come to the grid, which is, of course, like the, the struggle that Andretti is having coming to the grid where it's like, oh, yeah, have him come on as 11 team, as 11, words, Catherine, as an 11th team, or hmm, maybe you should buy a team out instead, which is kind of the more common ways that we have the current brands and current teams on the grid that we're going to be talking about throughout the rest of the series, where it's, 
you know, it's not as common to just be one name and sure, you know, pe- you know, teams have, you know, different title sponsors. And we'll talk about that with like V car when their starts, but, you know, to, to come on the grid as Ferrari and now to be technically Ferrari HP, like that's not common no, in the grand scheme not. of Formula One. No. And I think again, in this like drive to survive era, We've seen several name changes, especially like Racing Point Force India, Aston Martin. I'm so excited to talk I about Racing Force wait India. For that episode. <laughs> um, but, and like Toro, we've been through like Toro Rosso and Alpha Tauri, V Carb, but it hasn't necessarily been like the Haas situation where a team is brought to the grid. And I think, to like, we forget how young some of these teams are. Like, Mercedes has not been around for that long. And like, so many people think, like, oh, Mercedes is the greatest in modern day. But, but it's that's like, Mercedes is also like complicated because we did have a Mercedes back right. in the day that is completely different from the Mercedes right. that we have today, which we'll get to in a future episode once I yes. do all those and make all those notes. <laughs> but it, but also you're you're right. Like you think about Mercedes as one of the most dominant Formula One teams, which yes, they are, but they're also very young compared to Ferrari and Mc- and even McLaren. and McLaren. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's just interesting. I I think it's really important and cool to understand the history and what the team's gone through and what they face, where they're at now. But I'm very excited for our episodes on the rest of the eight teams so just to kind of give a background on structure we're going to do two teams every episode kind of group them together how we see fit we wanted to start with ferrari and mclaren obviously because they're the oldest and they you know deserve the respect of being in our first episode (laughs) and also Um, they're the first teams that i looked up (laughs) but also i did i did look them up first because they they were you know the 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 longevity and and the fact that like if we were if we were gonna do like a quick hits of like you know the team started this name this name this name covering ferrari and mclaren is gonna take all five seconds they started as ferrari they're still ferrari started mclaren still mclaren McLaren, Done. period. Done. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, but no, so we'll have four more episodes coming out for you guys with the rest of the eight teams currently on the grid about their history and their F1 genealogy. But this yeah. has been our, our first of this series. So I'm excited to do like an F101 series. I don't think we've really done that yet. We've just done, you know, one-off F101. One-offs. So... Uh, we have a five-part series coming to you guys now. So this is the the first with our the oldies but the goodies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that is it. Thanks for going off track with us, guys. <laughs>